And Father, I, I just thank you for the time. I thank you for the building. I thank you for the fellowship. I thank you for all the brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, that we could sit here and pray for people every day. You know our hearts. You know, as we start this little message that you put on my heart, as I cried out to you in the middle of the night, because I don't do anything without talking to you about it. And you make my life easy, Lord, because it's written. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the people that are not here right now that couldn't be here. But I want to thank you for all the people online that are starting to find out about MOS, what we do, what we preach, that we believe in the full gospel. And anyone out there that's listening to this recording right now, just hit the subscribe button. We, we fellowship seven days a week. And, and, and that's the beauty of technology that nobody can have an excuse. God is omnipresent. He's with us all the time. And I just want to share this morning what, what God does for all of us, you know? And I'm going to outline it here before us all today by just reading the word of God. Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewarded the proud doer. So he rewards us by doing what he tells us to do. What a, what a good God, you know? You know, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when, Lord, I came and appealed to you. And you said to us in the word, be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. And this one today is for you, brother Paul. All ye that hope in the Lord. And that's scripture. I mean that. He strengthened my heart when I had a, a blood clot. And, you know, there's a certain amount of fear because we go into surgeries, we come out of surgeries and blessed be the rock of our salvation. But the most important things in being born again, brothers and sisters, as I sit here before you, I'm sitting, I'm nice and relaxed. I'm not out of control like I always get. Maybe it's a new Charlie. But he says, just that scripture, be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart, all of us. So blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven. That's us. We're born again. We're saved by his shed blood at Calvary. We've been redeemed. Whose sin is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, being a sinner saved by grace I can get deep into meditating on scriptures when I'm even before people, when I'm in the secret place, following some of the things that God tells us to do in Matthew 6. But he says, he says here, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed. That word imputed means put upon us. And Jesus Christ imputed his righteousness on us, brothers and sisters. We deserved hell and we got saved. That's how much he loved us. When he said, Father, forgive him. When he said, it is finished. No greater thing. You know, when I played that song by Mylan this morning, he didn't impute iniquity on us. Because in to be more like Jesus, we have to put on the word of God, whose spirit, God's spirit, my wife was talking to me about the seven spirits of God this morning. God's spirit, it had no guile, no malice. He was beaten. He shed his blood so that you and I could have eternal life. I don't think too many people would do that. 
And as I read the word of God, sometimes we need to keep silence. Sometimes our bones are waxed old through the roaring all the day long and the growing and the, the rejection and everything that brothers and sisters struggle with, the affliction, the persecution that goes on in this world. And we always got to remember, Father, forgive them. Because if we're going to be like Jesus, we got to imitate Christ. And that's why I threw that in the morning when I wake up. We got to ask Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to operate, to guide us in our lives. And we have to ask him to keep us in check all day long. The word of God says, when I kept silence, my bones wax old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night, my hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Selah. And what happens here? Now I'll give you the address of where we are so you understand God's word. Psalm 32, I'm in verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. That was David, a man after God's own heart. And today, us men and women born again, because of what Jesus Christ did at the cross and said it was finished, we've been forgiven. We are spiritually born when we cry out to God to save us. We get to know him. We get to climb the holy mountain. For this shall everyone that is godly Pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found, surely in the floods of great waters. Thou shalt not come near unto him. I got a phone call yesterday, and it was because New York, the Bronx, Brooklyn was getting flooded. And that person cared about myself and my wife and our home. And he said, Pastor, are you getting flooded and I said no brother we're fine and I looked and I said to the Lord I said Lord have mercy on these people not a thing can happen in our lives because the same God that saved us the enemy has to go to him and ask for permission and there's boundaries in God's kingdom. God is still the Lord of lords, king of kings, and in him all things were created. You've heard me talk about that all the time. God becomes, as verse 7 says here, David knew it. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me in times of trouble. Thou shalt compass me with the songs of deliverance. Salah. And God had me reading that because God said to my heart, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, when we're in the presence of God and we're in communication, walking in the spirit, God's involved in all our thoughts. All you got to do is learn to not lean on what you're thinking sometimes because the enemy attacks you know, the word of God says, the songs of deliverance. Look at verse eight and nine, God speaking. He was speaking to David, he's speaking to us today. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. That means God's watching us. The Holy Spirit is guiding us. But you gotta be intimate. You got to do the things God tells us to do. Come to me and I will give you rest. Be not as the horse, nor as the mule, 
which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with a bit. You know, and I, I related to God's, because animals are stubborn sometimes. How much more are we stubborn sometimes, you know? God's given me so many different things that he's shown me in the Bible to remind us all of, including myself. Many sorrows shall be the wicked, but he that trusted in the Lord, mercy, mercy, compass, in other words, surrounds him, about him. He's got your rear, he's got your front. When, when you're in the word of God and you're saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, Things begin to happen. Life begins to change. Yeah, we go through some affliction. We go through areas in our life where we really don't know. And sometimes we get duped by other people because not everybody's on the same page. We don't live with people. We don't know what everybody else's afflictions and persecute. We don't even know if they really worship God morning, noon, and night. And that's for any of us. But the word of God comforts us when we read scripture verse by verse, chapter by chapter, because he's always showing us he's a, a good God, a God of love, a God of mercy. And he tells us all to be glad in the Lord. Just be happy. Why? Because he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Our names are written in his book. It's the most important thing that you just believe in what Jesus Christ did at Calvary, at that tree. Rejoice. And, and David called them. He says, ye righteous and shout for joy, ye that have an upright heart. I heard Paul shouting for joy before after worship. You know, he has made me glad. Jesus. Why? Because we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We're all in the same family. We're to edify and build each other up, not tear each other down. God didn't tear anybody down. He saved people. Let's follow into Psalm 33. Listen to the word of God. My Bible's all highlighted here. And this is my brand new Bible, my sword Bible that God said to me, you're getting older. I want you to, to, to read every day and every week before you get in front of my people. You have to be a good shepherd. There's plenty of time to talk about the things of the world. We need to talk about the word of God this morning. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. Why? Because we're righteous now. For praise is calmly for the upright. Praise the Lord, he says in verse two. With the harp, sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of 10 strings. Verse three. This is God speaking to everybody that says they believe. Sing unto me a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. Now, how do you interpret this? Just run with it. We're forgiven. God loves us. There's a proper way and there's an improper way. But if we do things according to the word of God, he inhabits the praise of his people. For the word of God is right and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. I, I just, the earth is full and I mean it with the goodness of God. Why? Because even us here, we're connected, and yet only because God's allowed the internet, communication lines. So nobody's got an excuse. Nobody had, fellowship is fellowship. I remember when I was a little boy in Europe, 
and I used to listen to the radio. They didn't have TVs yet. And I've seen how much it's progressed, even from the point of all the things that God has taught me in my life, especially my comment prior to the teaching today, that I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, I don't continue to do the things I used to do. God forbid. That's what Paul teaches us in Romans. But the word of God, where the heavens were made and all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth, goes all the way back to in the beginning. He breathed it on dirt and he made us. You and I. He also gathered the waters of the sea together as a heap. He layeth up the depth, the depth in storehouses. You know, I, I was just sitting there meditating on the word of God early this morning. And what does it say here in his word today? He says, let all the earth fear the Lord. So it was appropriate after reading this to, pay, to play, people need the Lord. Because not everybody has the Lord, brothers and sisters. And God has ordained us. He has saved us to be his goodwill, his ambassadors. Right now, to a world that many people are dying. But God has a plan. Why? Because... He gave us the word of God. He spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. That means it means nothing what unbelievers say. We're to pray for them. We're not to pay attention. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. There's nothing greater. I said it the other day, the word of God is better than fine gold and silver. It's the word of God and it gives us everlasting life. And we all know there's no glory for man. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, and he deserves the glory. It's that simple. David found out the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The word of God, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will endure forever, brothers and sisters. Just here. I'm speaking here from my heart right now with what David left behind for us to meditate on. Why? Because the thoughts of God's heart are for all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he had chosen for his own inheritance. It means the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost has divinely given favor to the brothers and sisters that believe in their heart and trust him with his word. You know, the earth is his footstool. David had to pray, we have to pray. From the place of his habitation, he looked upon all the inhabitants of the earth. We can't figure that out. But boy, is the word of God powerful here today. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, what's what it says here, verse 18. The eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. That means revere. That means, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm sorry. Help me, I can do better, you know? Because upon him is their hope in his mercy. That's all of us. 
to, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. What? Don't worry about when there's going to be famines because God's already preparing us that he gave us a body that can go without food for some time. And as he fed Elijah, he can take care of his own. Believe me. There's so many things that I'm beginning to learn as I get older and I keep studying the word of God and I keep listening to good brothers that get up and preach some really good messages. I'm not a TV buff anymore. I got rid of that addiction a long time ago. Our soul waited for the Lord. He is our help and he's also our shield. He's our protector, brothers and sisters. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted, trusted. And you know, this is David writing to us. We trusted in Jesus's name, his holy name. And in the gospel of John, Jesus said, even to those that believe in my name, I will save. You're talking about God here. You're not talking about a created human. We're talking about the creator king. And I hope people understand why my heart is just pouring out this little message today. And, and to God be the glory. We should be praising God every morning, every afternoon, every evening. We should be praying for our enemies. Maybe we'll land there today. Verse 22, let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according as we put our hope in thee. And I got to tell you, you got to. You really got to meditate on the word of God sometimes. And, and you know, we, we sit here today, and if it wasn't for my brothers and sisters, and because God said, feed my sheep, you think I would be doing this? We have an av avenue now where we can just pour out the word of God to everybody. Brother Jason's doing it. Brother Paul Devine's doing it. We need to keep the, the worship and, and be an example to the unbelievers. Why? Because he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. That's David. And we're supposed to be servants of the Most High God. David was a servant. He was a sinner, but he was a servant. He needed God in his life every day. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my mouth. Sometimes we talk too much about the things of the world. And it's not our home. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. That means your audiences will hear and be glad. Everybody suffers, and there's no excuse. We're, we're to give God his due. God did nothing but save us. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, David is saying, and let us exalt his name together. I just love reading these scriptures this morning because this isn't, I've already read them all this morning because when I got up, when I got up in the middle of the night, God was on my mind, my heart. I said, Lord, what do I got to do? He said, I told you what to do a long time ago, feed my sheep. There's nothing I could do except give people the word of God. If they don't want to hear, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing you can do. Pray for them. What happens when you seek the Lord? David said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. I got to tell you something. 
I had a, I had a bucket load of fears. And thank God, little by little, even as my wife began to pray for me last year, I don't have those fears anymore. I'm starting to get real things done, real time. And all I could do is say, thank you, Jesus, every day. They looked unto him and we were lightened. You ever hear people when they're getting deliverance, they feel lighter? And their faces were not ashamed. They smiled. God, God has his face shining through us because we're thankful and grateful that once we were lost and now we're saved. We don't have to worry about where we're going. We as believers know where we're going. The earth is not our home. It's only God's will that we're supposed to be getting up and orchestrating in our lives. Even the poor man. He said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him. And what? Saved him out of all his troubles. My wife gave me a testimony about a woman taking care of a diabetic, a closed in man. And all that man needs is Jesus. He doesn't have Jesus. My wife looked at the woman. It's, my wife offered to help her do something for the man. And, and the woman said, that's all right. My wife says, well, he needs Jesus. The woman said, yes, I know he does. This scripture says it all. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him from all his troubles. And here's another blessing from the word of God this morning for you and I, and anyone we minister to with the word of God. It's the angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him and deliver them. In other words, God will deliver you. The same way he delivered Paul from his worry about having a heart valve put in me when I dropped dead and I didn't know I was dead. God, God has a way of working things out for everybody. And all we got to do is be still and know that he's God. And what does it say here in Psalm 34 today? Oh, taste and see. In other words, put God's word into action in our lives that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. When are you going to start to repent and turn your eyes to the word of God so that you can be comforted and you can find rest from your troubles? You know, God said, a lot of things to all of us in this book. I just love the word of God this morning. Oh, fear the Lord. Ye, he's talking to all of us, not just us here, but everybody that says they're a believer. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. My needs are well met, even at my age right now. I have, a, I have a woman with me that's always recycling, doing things. Because God's in control when you trust and obey the Lord Jesus Christ. To the young lions, they do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing, it says here. Come, all of us, come ye children, hearken unto me. David saying, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is it that desires life, loves many days, that he may see good? And listen to what he tells us here. Very important is our speech. You know, I could rattle all day long about chapter chapters in James. But this is out of David's heart. He says, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Remember what I said in the beginning of this meditation and teaching today of God's word. We're getting a mouthful here today. Go back and listen to this teaching. 
pass the ammunition to people that need to be saved. What does he tell us here? He's telling us to keep our tongue from evil, thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and to do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And what? Look at my ears. His ears are, are open to our cry. You're walking with God every day. You're going to be in some deep conversation because he's your best friend. Otherwise, you couldn't sing, what a, what a friend I have in Jesus. Or you couldn't sing, Jesus loves me. Yes, I know, because the Bible tells me so. We know that. But how many people are around all of us that don't know? Millions, brothers and sisters. There's a harvest and the church is asleep. Let alone what Jesus said before the return. He called it a lukewarm church. You know? Verse 18. The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and save it such be a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of all of them. All of them, he says. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Boy, do I stand on that scripture. Every time I read that psalm, I look up and say, thank you, Lord. That's how intimate when God is your savior, you can have a relationship like this. Evil shall slay the wicked. And that's going on all around us today. And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. But here's a great promise at the end of 34 this morning. Because we're going to move on from here. You know, the Lord impressed upon me. The Lord redeemeth the soul of who? His servants. And the moment we said, I believe, help me, Lord Jesus, you and I became his servants. Don't ever forget that. You belong to Jesus Christ. Your body is not your own. Before you make all these decisions, go to God in prayer. I'm living it right now, brothers and sisters. I'm living it because I am a servant of the Lord. I get up every day and I say, give me Jesus. I've chosen to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I sing that song every week. Comes out of my heart and out of my lips. I worship God every day because he's allowed me to live and be a servant. I want you to turn with me to, let's go to Matthew 5. It's in the, uh, the read here on the Sermon of the Mount. I want to share something that God had me highlight to talk about. And, it, and it, it's really an amazing thing. Beginning in verse 37, I don't have to talk about the Beatitudes. Everybody gets up and preaches that. But this is areas we need to repent, even as Christians today. But let your communication be yea, yea, and nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh from the evil. Those are the unclean spirits. They can be on the outside influencing us they could be in other christians influencing us don't listen to everything everybody's saying go to god in prayer get god involved in your thoughts your com conversations because that's what he's telling us right here you've heard that it had been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth but i say unto you 
that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other one also. You find very few people doing that today. Listening to what I just read. It's scripture. It's God speaking to every one of us. It says, Brother Jason would say, it's in the red. Okay. And in, if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy cloak, let him have the other one also. I don't know too many Christians that'll do that. I've been a Christian for 37 years, soon to be 38. You know, whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. In other words, stay with him for another mile. Keep ministering to them. The word of God doesn't return void, people. Give to him that ask, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. I mean, there's some strong verbiage coming from Jesus Christ to all of us today. That's why you got to be in a relationship with God. I, I spoke to my wife about this on our way to the church today. But the church isn't a building anymore. It's whenever true believers gather and sit under the word of God. And God's wide open the harvest now. There's people, that's why I played that song again. It's really affected me a lot lately because most of the world is not going up. They're going down right now. But we can play a part in this, brothers and sisters. Because it's where our heart is. That's where God operates. You have heard that it had been said that thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Verse 44, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, you know, I didn't dream this up. I had divine guidance because these are things God's making me do as I study and read the word of God. Why? That you may be the children of your father, which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Always remember that. He's omnipresent. He knows every heartbeat we have. He also knows every thought that's going through our heads. The devil cannot read your thoughts. The devil is a created being. He is not the creator. He just fell into pride and God said, that's it. I'm done with you. It's just like a sister said to me yesterday that called me. When I got delivered, I was a Satanist, and I'm delivered. I will never be the same, and I will never go back to worshiping the devil. Well, when we worship the world and the things of the world, we're worshiping the God of this world, people. The Bible tells us not to love the world or the things of the world, you know? Well, let, me, let me finish this. I got a little more I want to talk about that God gave me this morning. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, you gotta salute everybody. You gotta, God's an equal opportunity employer. It is God's will for the unbelievers to be saved. That's why we're here. We're supposed to be about the Father's business daily, taking up the cross and walking. I know it's hard, but God gets us through. When we're weak, he strengthens us. Do not even the, oh, listen to this. Look, 47 and 48, then I'm going to go to another chapter here if you salute brethren only what do you more than others do not even the publicans do that it says so question mark 
but ye therefore be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So, you know, I, I want to go to uh, 15, 16. Let me, let me go to 15. There was one verse I was pulling out of 15 today. For God, oh, wait, I'll back up. God, Jesus was talking about the tradition of the elders. He said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, honor thy father and mother, and he that cursed his father and mother, let him be, let him die the death. But you say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it's a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God non-effect by your traditions. And he was talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And he says, in vain, they worship me. He said, these people, he called them hypocrites. He used the fact that Isaiah blew the horn on them. He said, you hypocrites. These people draw near unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That's Jeremiah 12, 2. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You know, you hear me pray this all the time in the warfare prayers. Cut into the chase. God warned us in 16. Here's how he warned us. Jesus said unto them, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of leaven going on in the body of Christ today, brothers and sisters. Jesus said, when he perceived, when he was trying to reason with them, he said to them, oh, ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. So in closing today, because I, I, I really put this message together, it's mostly the whole message is scripture. It's not my opinion, it's God's. Jesus answered and said unto them, and he was talking because Simon Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Okay, well, we're born again believers. What's our problem? We know who God is. We've been sealed by God's Holy Spirit. Our body is the temple for the Holy Spirit to operate in. What's our problem, people? Blessed art thou, Simon. And we know Simon denied him three times. After he told them he was for blessed. He says to Simon, Bon Jonah, for flesh and blood, had not revealed it unto me, but my Father, which is in heaven. God had to touch you and me to get us saved, people. Go back to when you got saved and get back on the road to glory. Get back to being that man or woman and being a doer of God's word, okay? Because he says, also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Jesus Christ is the rock. The Roman Catholics thought, because they claim he was their first pope, but that's a lie. That, that's a total lie fabricated by man. And the rock is Jesus Christ. We're the living stones, and he builds his church upon the body of Christ. And he says, and I quote this all the time in deliverance, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee, and you know where I'm closing with this, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 
So all I could say for anyone hearing this, may God bless you. I pray that you would offer your heart as you hear this and say, Lord, if you don't know Jesus Christ, just simple prayer. You don't have to have any fancy religious prayer. You could just say, Lord Jesus, please save me. I need your help. And it can be a done deal right then, right there, right now. So God bless you. And I hope you enjoyed this message today. Amen.